I'm Amanda Pattison, product specialist for industrial control sensor and safety products with Werner Electric Supply. Today I wanted to go over how to do a basic program within the CR or 440C CR30 using the Studio 5000 add-on profile. So what we're going to do is we have the CR30 already added to our I.O. tree. I want to right click on the CR30 and click on properties. And we're that's just going to open up the add-on profile again. Then we're going to go to the logic configuration tab and click on edit logic. This is going to bring up logic editing software. I'm going to go ahead and expand that. So we are going to make a program that's going to match my demo that I have sitting here. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this emergency stop safety monitoring function and then drag it right over to this first safety monitoring green square. Notice that when I have this I add this um, e-stop onto this device. It defaults to the next available embedded inputs. And the embedded inputs are basically just the inputs that are local to the device itself. So you can change these based on your configuration. But I'm going to leave these at default because mine are my I.O. is landed on embedded input 00 and 01. Next thing I wanted to show you is under advanced settings, this is where you would change any information that you need. Um, it, we do have a basic emergency stop button which does have two normally closed contacts. So we're going to leave this at default. Um, we're going to be pulse testing from test source A, 12, and test source B is 13. And then our discrepancy time is set to two, so that's 100 milliseconds because it multiplies by 50 milliseconds. And basically what that is, is it's the amount of time that when you push that e-stop, it's the amount of the time that it allows for either contact to close. And if a contact doesn't close in that amount of time, it's going to say that it's not in a safe condition because one of the contacts is either welded open or welded shut. We're going to close that. All right, next I'm going to add my SensorGuard gate switch. So I'm going to click on gate switch and then go ahead and drag that back over right underneath the e-stop. These, this one also does default to embedded input 2 and 3, and I'm just going to leave that at default because that's where my I.O. is landed. But this one we're going to have to do some configuration changes. So I'm going to go open up advanced settings. Since this safety guard switch is an OSSD type device or solid state device, we're going to have to change these inputs from 2 normally closed to 2 OSSD, otherwise it's not going to work correctly. And then we'll leave everything else on default itself. Next, we're going to add a reset function, and since our application is going to require a manual reset, you can do an automatic reset, but our function requires a reset. So I'm going to click on this reset button, and then drag it right under here, underneath this gate switch. I'm also going to change this from embedded input 04, because I do not have my reset button wired to that. It's actually wired into one of the, the plug-in module on the front of this device because it's not a safety rated device, so it doesn't need to be landed on the embedded inputs on the actual CR30 itself. You can land it on a standard input module, which is this plug-in module right here that I have. Next, we're going to add our logic to this configuration. I'm going to add the AND function because I want this e-stop and I want this safety switch to both be in a safe state before I allow my safety system to restart. Next one I'm going to add is our safety output function. So I'm going to add this immediate off because if the e-stop gets pushed or if that sensor guard switch gets opened, I want my outputs to drop out and go into a safe state immediately and not delayed or anything. So I'm going to click on this immediate off and then drag right over to the safety output. And notice even with the safety output, it defaults to embedded output 18 and 19. Um, these can be changed as well, but we're going to leave them at default because that's where my device is landed. I don't have any feedback wired into this device, so I'm going to leave feedback at none. I am going to keep this reset type as manual because, like I said, when we were adding the reset function to begin with, I want to have a manual reset. Um, so we'll leave that at default. This is where you would change it from manual to auto. And then reset input. If I click on reset input, it's going to say, Configured reset function is SMF3, so I'm going to pick SMF3 because you'll notice this reset function 
is down here and it's in the SMF3 spot. So it's going to take that information. Next thing we're going to do is add all of our logic together. So I'll click on this emergency stop, just click on this blue button right here, and then I connect it to the logic level AND, which all you have to do is click on that blue button there. This function is connected to that point. Our gate switch, click on this blue button for the gate switch, click on the other AND. Now we have both of those connected to the input function of the AND. Now the output function of the AND, we'll click on this blue and then click on the safety output function. Now we have our device configured completely. I'm going to go ahead and click on the build safety relay and this just checks for any errors in our configuration. And notice it does not pop up so you'd have to actually close out of this to see that your build has been succeeded. And when it says build succeeded, that means we don't have any errors. If it said build not succeeded and there was any type of description for any errors in there, then you would have to go back and fix those before you could complete your configuration. All right, now let's hit apply. So we should be all good. And I'm going to click OK. Now we're going to download to our controller. So I'm going to go ahead and click. I'm offline, so I'll go ahead and click download. Notice after I clicked download and we're in run or we're in program mode right now, but we are online, the IO is not responding correctly and we have this green IO flashing light. Also down here in our add-on profile for the CR30, there's a yellow triangle, which means that it's not happy. So let's go ahead and go fix that. So we'll right click, go back into the add-on profile. Notice down here, status faulted, it's not happy. So we're going to go into the logic configuration again and click on logic configuration. And then this is going to show our device. There were differences found between our configuration in Studio 5000 and the existing configuration in my demo for the CR30. So we're going to want to download to the safety relay because we just spent all that time configuring this. We would like that configuration to be in our device. If you hit upload, that means that you're going to be uploading whatever's in the CR30 right now into your program, and that'll overwrite your program that you just created. So, so we're going to click download. All right, download has succeeded. So hit OK, turn it back into run mode. Now our IO is OK, and we don't have the yellow triangle anymore, and we're running. So everything is happy again. So I'm going to put this into run mode so we can test our application. All right, so since we required a manual reset, this, this application requires you to do a reset before the configuration starts running. So I'm going to hit this reset. And notice our device is nice and happy. All of our outputs are turned on. Everything is good. Let's test our e-stop. Press the e-stop. Everything turned off. Everything's good. Perfect. Turn the e-stop back on. Notice how it doesn't turn on right away. It requires a reset. So we're going to click on reset. That part's good. Now we'll test our gate switch. So I'll open this gate switch. Everything turns off. We're all good. Close the gate switch. Hit our reset. Everything's perfect. But there's one thing to be wary of since our configuration is working perfectly and um, is this run light is not solid green, and we really need that run light to be solid green. Um, the reason that run light is not solid green is we have not verified our application. Um, you can run this device for 24 hours while, before verification, but after that it's going to go into a fault mode, and you have to cycle power for it to come back up and run again. So let's run through the verification to get rid of that flashing green light. So we click on verify, and then it's just going to run through a couple questions. So it's, have you followed installation instructions and precautions to conform to applicable safety standards? Yes, we did. Have you verified electrical spec specifications? Yes, we did. Have you verified that the electrical specifications are compatible? Yes. Have you cal calculated the system safety response time for each safety chain? Yes. 
is the system response time in proper relation to the process tolerance time? Yes. And have the probability values been calculated? Yes, we have. And have you performed all appropriate functional verification tests on the system? Yes, we have. So when I noticed when before I had all those check marks clicked, this generate button was grayed out. But now that I have all the check marks in there, the generate button is able to be pressed. So we're going to click on generate, and this is going to generate our safety verification ID. And to, in order to do that, it does have to shut down and go into program mode, and then we can put it back into run mode after we get that verification. So now we have our safety verify succeeded comes up. And yes, we want to change our relay back into run mode. So we'll click on yes, and then click OK. On this screen, I, we have a verification ID now. It's uh, 5006. And then now the run, it's solid green. It's not flashing green anymore. So that's how you would program a basic program in the 440C CR30 using the Studio 5000 add-on profile. If you would like more information, please contact your local Werner Electric Supply representative.